So I've been binging The Last Kingdom on Netflix, and it follows a similar storyline to the new Netflix historical drama Vikings Valhalla. This is in the same vein of the series Vikings, except it's set a hundred years into the future of Vikings. So do you need to have watched the original Vikings series to enjoy this one? And more importantly, is Vikings Valhalla even worth checking out? And I did say the word Vikings quite a bit, right? Well, it's only going to get worse. Vikings Valhalla chronicles the heroic adventures of the legendary explorer Leif Erikson, his fiery and headstrong sister Freydis Eric's daughter, and the ambitious Nordic prince Harald Sigurdsson. As tensions between the Vikings and the English royals reach a bloody breaking point, and as the Vikings themselves clash over their conflicting Christian and pagan beliefs, these three Vikings begin an epic journey that will take them across oceans and through battlefields as they fight for survival and glory. So if you've watched Vikings or The Last Kingdom, you kind of know what you're in store for with this new storyline. We get the English and Vikings, both with mindsets on expanding their reach and their rule. And while they may go about things differently, each group still has a brutality to it when pursuing what they feel to be their manifest destiny. The costume and set design are so well executed. Everything looks exactly how I imagined it would, with the Vikings employing a lot of furs and leathers, and then the English using more lavish and adorned fabrics. And just looking at those settings, I mean, they made me cold, because almost everything is cast in this gray, overcast tone. Now, I still love that look, but... Mm. Occasionally, there will be some sunshine that breaks through to warm up the scene, but it's not present that often. Now, like I had said in the synopsis, this follows Leif Erikson, his sister Freydis, and a Christian Viking named Harold. Leif and Freydis arrive at a time when the Vikings are congregating to take revenge on the English for a massacre that the English king had initiated. Now, while Leif isn't there for that purpose, he soon finds himself entrenched in their cause and then becoming a key factor in many of the ensuing actions. On the English side, we get to see maneuverings and schemings from the nobles, and then while some of it is kind of obvious, I didn't think that that took away from enjoying their devious actions. And speaking of action, I mean, there are multiple scenes that are quite tense because of just how the plot is set up. We'll see characters, whether they are Viking or English, in situations that have just impending doom. And because the show isn't afraid to kill people off, there really is a real sense of peril that any of the characters could just meet their demise in some spectacular way. Now, the story does a great job of setting up the scenes to create the maximum amount of tension. One involves this bridge, and there is building intensity between the musical score, the drama, and then just in the way that the scenes are edited together so that they alternate between all of the players. It put me on the edge of my seat, and the scene doesn't resolve quickly, so it allows us to feel all of that anxiety. There are a ton of sword fights and hand-to-hand -hand battles, as well as some epic army-against-army -army fights. And they're bloody and brutal, and but they're always exciting, too. I mean, in one scene, because of the amount of horses that warriors were riding, the camera looks like it's trembling with the vibration of the hoofbeats. I mean, it's like that. Now, my guess is that it was more of a shaky effect that was created in post-production, but it still adds a bunch of excitement to the scene, just because we can almost feel the tremendous power that's coming from all of these horses charging down the bridge. There's also a scene that feels very similar to the Battle of Helm's Deep. I mean, it's not as epic as that, but it's still effective and it's fun to watch. And it also leads to a couple of brutal clashes, which is then exactly what we've been waiting for, and the show didn't disappoint in that at all. I think this show does a good job of causing some internal conflict on who you want to root for. I mean, the English clearly started a fight, making them the bad guys, but then there are times where they evoke some sympathy too. And the Vikings are just riding an offense, but I also love how complex the Viking dynamic is. I mean, not only do we have Vikings against the English, but we have Christian Vikings and Norse Vikings where they clash on their religious beliefs. And this adds a whole new layer of complexity and conflict. I mean, even if they have the same ultimate goal, which is really to take revenge on the English. Now, the story will fluctuate between the Viking storylines and the English storylines, even though they all have to do with the Vikings to some degree. But one issue that ends up happening in this show because of how it's structured is that the focus is divided. Now, sometimes one group feels less important or even left out of the conversation. This is evident, especially in the last episode, where the story barely even pays attention to the English side of the story and spends a majority of the time as the Vikings clash in this exciting climax. In this show, there are some great characters. Our three main Vikings, I mean, they're awesome. But there are also a few that I really loved seeing. We've obviously got Leif, Freydis, and Harold. But then there's Liv and Jarl Hakon, who are just charismatic, and they're easy to root for. I also really enjoy the relationships between our characters. And I'm not just talking about romantic relationships. I mean, the back alley deals that happen add so much drama to the narrative. 
There are double and triple crosses, almost making sure that nobody can ever be trusted. But then we'll get a character or two who just don't know how to not stick to their word. I mean, and so it's great to watch that honor play out amidst all of the treachery going on. I loved the Christian Viking zealot Jarl Korra. This dude is completely unhinged and psychotic. I mean, when you have somebody so brutal and they're nuts, it's a scary combination and it works to create a very effective villain. There are only eight episodes in this first season and they're very bingeable. Each is between 45 minutes and an hour, but they're so engaging that it's hard not to keep hitting next episode. Now I had to watch over a couple of nights just because I had to start them later in the evening, but I would find myself at 1 a.m. you know, questioning whether or not I could squeeze just one more episode in and still not die the next day. And I typically opted for less sleep because the show is so engaging, but it didn't start out that way. Now, I'm not saying it started out poorly because it didn't. I think it was just because I had to pause my binging of The Last Kingdom to watch this, so my brain hadn't fully released from that other series, and there are some differences between the two. The characters are wonderfully built, giving us good development at the right moments, but we also get to watch some growth happen as well. The relationships are complicated, adding some intrigue to the overall storyline, and the schemings, while somewhat predictable, are still very exciting and compelling in their deviousness. I really enjoyed this series, and if you're like me and you haven't seen the original Viking series yet, you can start from here and not miss anything. Now, I am very excited for the next season as this one ends with a lot of maneuverings, which then set up season two to be pretty explosive. There's sex, nudity, some profanity, and a ton of bloody and terrible violence. I give Vikings Valhalla four and a half out of five couches. So which show do you like better, Vikings or The Last Kingdom? Or do you just like both equally? I mean, that's a fair answer too. Let me know in the comments below. And also special kudos to whoever counted the number of times that I said Vikings, because I am sure I said it a bunch. If you enjoyed this review, please give it a like. Also, don't forget to share and subscribe. I'm Chris. This is Movies and Munchies. Thanks for couching with me. Vikings. Vikings. Vikings, Vikings, Vikings.